Welcome back to Hotspots. IS may have lost territory in Iraq and Syria, but Islamic extremism is gaining a stronghold here in Central Africa. We gained special access to the Cameroon military who are fighting the terror group Boko Haram. They share the same aims and ambitions as IS to create a caliphate, only this time in Africa. Are you fighters or not? These are people who are doing some pretty horrible things. At least one person has been injured. They want to set up a caliphate. Are they winning? They're going to be just as extremist as ISIS was. years, a little over 10 years ago, no one had even heard of Boko Haram. It was this little-known terror group which originated in the north of Nigeria. And its name means education is forbidden. Boko Haram, qui de temps en temps perturbe vraiment l'équilibre et la stabilité de cette région, et qu'on le veut ou pas, il y a eu à un moment donné. I remember the images of the schoolgirls uh, who had been kidnapped, hundreds of them. Boko Haram armed men broke into their dormitories where they were waiting to take their exams and kidnapped the whole lot of them, forced them to convert to Islam, and many of them were taken away into the forest and still haven't been found. We went to Chibok in Nigeria very soon after the girls were taken. And I remember just how chilling the whole thing was. Whoa. This is where the girls were sleeping on that night when they heard gunfire. And then the Boko Haram militants came in, got them to get up, move out of the beds, move out of the dormitories and go outside. They were loaded onto the back of pickup trucks and then told that they were being kidnapped. So Boko Haram instills a great deal of fear in that region. They want territory. They want to set up a caliphate. And those people who thought that ISIS was dead and buried with the dismantling of the um, caliphate in Syria and Iraq are sadly wrong. We wanted to find out a bit more about how much of a hold they had in Cameroon. I know Alex had been trying for some time to get into the Boko areas. It's nice to have a nice military plane for us. It makes travel so much easier. Obviously, in the extreme north of Cameroon, was one of the areas where Boko Haram are known to travel in. We had quite a journey to get to the areas where Boko Haram was operating. L'extrême nord du Cameroun est probablement la région la plus vaste et qui aussi est un peu comme l'Afrique vue du côté du Sahel. The army are quite concerned for our safety and for theirs as well. The sort of people they're dealing with don't fight you know, like a traditional enemy. Yeah, put your, your jacket on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Ooh, the journey went on and on and on and on. We were traveling in a 
five-seater car. There were six of us with body armor, lots of luggage, crammed into this car along very, very bumpy roads. With all of these long journeys, somewhere along the way, we had to eat. They call it uh, soya here. Soya? Soya, this is soya, green meat. Does that have spice on it? Yeah. And small pepper. And some of the stuff on the market menus was a little bit different. What is it? Chicken? Beef meat, cow meat. It's cow meat. <laughs> when we're on the road traveling, we tend to eat sparingly. We don't eat a huge amount when you're traveling. We had a lot of strange things which I'd never eaten before, <laughs> that's for certain. And I've traveled all over Africa. What's that one? We went to one market and we were offered porcupine, porcupine. Yes. monkey, monkey. monkey. Rat. 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 rat, and then much lower down and less interesting was chicken and fish. I actually asked, is there any chicken? And they told me, don't eat the chicken. It's really not good. You're much better with the rat. But I'd also covered Ebola, and I thought, there's no way I'm going to be eating bush rat. And we saw the rats before they got into the rat stew. And there were at least six. There was all sorts to eat. In some of these places, you stop at the side of the road, and there's some sort of red meat being grilled. You're never quite sure how you're going to react to some of the local food. Fancy a bit of rat. <laughs> Part of our journey, we jumped onto the back of an army truck. We're going to jump in with this lot, hopefully. You're bombing along, and you're just getting sandblasted, basically. It's warm air that you're being hit with. At one point, I thought it was raining, but I realised it was just the sweat coming off my body armour and all the, the helmet, it was dripping and splashing everywhere. It's pretty disgusting, but it was so hot. So, so hot. La route vraiment est difficile. On, on se croirait dans un rallye Paris-Dakar. We were a small team, but together with our army escort, we were pretty big. You know, we were in a very, very dangerous place with lots of troops in a convoy. You get lots of looks as you're going through these villages, and you're not quite sure how people are reacting to, not necessarily us, but the army trundling through their little village. You know, there could be hostile forces there. We just don't know, you know. You shoot through those areas pretty quickly, but the army isn't universally liked, I, I think is fair to say. Your imagination runs wild sometimes when she's hours on the road. I thought they might slow down a bit with me hanging off trying to get shots, but they weren't interested in that. They just wanted to get to the furthest camp as quickly as possible. Jeez, I've got a bit of a sore bomb. How's yours? How's your bum? That's uh, killing <laughs> So we turn up to this fairly remote outpost. It was really sparse, there was not much there at all. Bonjour. They built a huge big moat round the outside and sandbanks on lookout posts, which is always a little bit of an indication that they feel they have to be ready in case they come under attack. They said, do you want to come out with us and see how we get on on patrol? So, of course, we said yes. We were immediately thrown into the fact that we just had to go and film them on manoeuvres, if you like. I was a bit concerned because it was really exposed. We were completely in the open. 
but it pretty quickly changed from just a fairly boring walking shot of some soldiers to some action right there in front of us. We literally hadn't been going for very long before one of them says, can you see Boko Haram? Uh, they're saying they spotted the extremists. Oh, look, they're, they're running. And I looked and I could see at least two figures dressed completely in black running. They said we were very close to the Nigerian border. This is the area where Boko Haram um, mount a lot of their attacks. And this is what they're up against. The vehicle's gonna fire. We're being told that uh, the Boko Haram militants fired on some civilians over there. They think that at least one person has been injured. We see a group of farmers, civilians, people who've been working out in the fields, picking up someone who appears to be wounded. They're bringing him over. So we go up to meet them. There's this poor woman with a baby on her back sobbing her, her heart out, wailing. And this man, who we find out is, is her husband, is just lying there, looking in a very bad way. I'm moving the body. We weren't sure if he was dead or alive at that stage. Just from a distance, we could see he's pretty lifeless. They don't seem to have any first aid equipment. I remember I had a spare trauma back in our vehicle, so I ran and grabbed that, gave it to a soldier, and he raced over and took it apart. And that was actually used then trauma dressings and proper first aid kits. The guy was alive, he was in pain, obviously, but he was conscious and he was looking around at the guys as he was being bandaged up. He had some sort of injury to his stomach. I could see you know, blood around his stomach area, but he, he was conscious and, and, and alert. Let's go, over, 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 oh, let's go. The soldiers zip him off to get medical attention at the nearest field hospital. I thought that guy had had it, actually. Yeah, well, that's it. he didn't look he good, but he was, he was breathing and, uh, yeah, he was conscious, so. You can tell as soon as we arrive that things have gone horribly wrong. You can just see the man lying on the floor and that no one's been tending to him because um, he's obviously gone by this time. And there's very little you can do in those circumstances. I mean, very little you can do. There's nothing you can say to someone who's just lost someone they loved. We were quite shocked by that. It seemed to be another terrible civilian tragedy in the fight against um, Boko Haram. <laughs> They took us to this one base, big base, where they had captured or persuaded Boko Haram fighters to give up and join them. They said they had like over 100 fighters who they were allowing to stay on the base. 
As soon as we turned up to the camp where the Boko fighters had been detained, our producer suddenly realised he could sense something wasn't quite right there and whispered to me at one point, I think those were fighters over there. Mais nous, les Camerounais, on ne connaît pas quel est le village, le, quel, à quoi ressemblent les combattants de Boko Haram. They captured a couple of their vehicles, which looked very battle scarred. Then all these fighters got paraded out in front of us. And they're all looking a little bit sheepish, actually. Nous avons découvert enfin à quoi ressemblaient ces gens qui tuent les citoyens, les civils, pillent les villages, brûlent les maisons, emportent le bétail. Ce sont des jeunes. You get a sense that these are people who are obviously caught doing some pretty horrible things. Et lorsqu'on nous a dévoilé toutes les armes qu'ils utilisaient pour toutes ces différentes attaques, moi, principalement, j'ai été choqué. I don't know what Kevin was thinking, but I was thinking, yeah, OK, you know, I'm sure there'll only be like a half dozen, a dozen or so. It took them a good hour to bring out and a whole load of men carrying them all on the back of trucks and things to lay them all out on this huge spread. There's really pretty primitive weaponry on display there, and machetes and knives and all sorts. You know, it's, a lot of it looked pretty homemade, to be honest. At a moment, I didn't want to look at them because I was thinking that at any moment, they could become violent and then us do harm. It's very, very rare to get unfettered access to someone who has taken up arms, joined a terror group to kill. So we started talking to them. They weren't admitting openly to being fighters, certainly to begin with. They were all very coy and uh, very angelic. <laughs> Time after time, they kept on saying, well, oh, I didn't do anything. When you were with Boko, what did you do? Fight? For, kill? For that, no, I'm not fight. I just do uh, fresh water. Until finally, um, I was getting more and more irritated and saying, you know, are, are, are you fighters or not? Okay, let's move on. We're not getting anywhere with this. I think, I think, we, I think we leave him. Thank you. You know, come on, there's no, there's no point interviewing you if all of you are going to be telling me this codswallop. And the intelligence guy jumps in and, and starts saying, no, they were fighters. This one did that, and that one did this, and this one did that. And they kind of all sort of looked at him with a bit of a knowing look. And I think they thought, mm -hmm, right, the game's up. Might as well say a few true stories. We all want one flag and one caliphate, you know, one area, territory that we can call our own, the African caliphate. And it's going to be just as dangerous, just as devastating, and going to be just as extremist as ISIS was. Are they winning? No. They can't win. They can't win. You're not going to let them win? No, no. The thing is, I've never been with any military which ever says, you know what, it's not going so well. They just don't say that. It's against every fibre in their body to admit that things aren't going according to plan and Boko Haram is still getting stronger and still terrorizing people and now wants to be the new ISIS. They're moving around between borders freely. You know, it's hard to see how they're going to be fought and, and completely eradicated because they're, they're just everywhere. On a le sentiment aujourd'hui que si les moyens ne sont pas doublés, ils peuvent descendre tout doucement et venir renforcer les rangs. The Boko Haram.
Et à ce moment, je pense qu'on va vivre quelque chose de pire. I think the world saw the dismantling of this incredible caliphate in, in Syria and Iraq. And they thought that was all over. And if the world doesn't wake up, there's going to be another caliphate. Only this time, it's going to be in Africa. Looking to the future, I think that they're going to struggle fighting Boko Haram in, in those areas for some time to come. And the problem with an African caliphate is that there are loads of diaspora. They have family and friends across the whole world. And tomorrow you're going to wake up and it's going to be on Europe's doorstep. It's going to be on the West's doorstep. And it's going to end up causing a huge big problem for the whole world if something isn't done about it soon.